Good morning and welcome to the Week Ahead video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Friday the 13th of September 2019 and the time has just gone 11.55 British Summer Time and I'm looking ahead to next week, uh, which is Monday the 16th, 16th of September through Friday the 20th of September. But before we have a look at um, what's going on next week, let's just take a look at what's happened in the past couple of days. Um, yesterday uh, we, have, we heard from the ECB. Uh, we had a interest rate cut on the deposit rate and we had a QE program announced for early September. Uh, the European Central Bank also lowered its growth guidance uh, for 2019 and 2020 and it lowered its in, in, uh, inflation outlook for the next for this this year and the next two years. And Mario Draghi, the head of the ECB, also called for a dis additional stimulus uh, in terms of fiscal stimulus. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, he's, this is not the first time he's, he's called on governments to bring in fiscal stimulus. So it seems to me that Mario Draghi is knowing, knows that monetary policy alone can solve all the Eurozone's problems. He's also had an aggressive um, QE scheme in place before. Another one uh, is going to restart uh, in early November. It seems to me that Mr. Draghi goes right we can't have a government bond buying scheme that will last forever, so we, must need, we, must, we need additional assistance. The fact that the ECB lowered uh, their interest rate is obviously going to be a bit of an issue. It could influence all the central banks around the world. I'll be talking about the, um, the Federal Reserve and the Bank of England later on in this video. So, the, so what we saw yesterday was initially a fairly sharp sell-off in, uh, in the euro against the major currencies such as the British pound and the US dollar. But we seem to have actually kind of found the floor and the market bounced back. Uh, and that is also, and we we're seeing euro dollar high on the day, higher on, on, on the session. It would appear that some of the some some of the kind of negative news or the dovish update from yesterday was already factored in. So we've seen a bit of a rebound uh, in the euro against the, against the US dollar. Um, we've seen equity markets are higher after the announcement. Uh, but when you consider if interest rates are further in negative territory, that's a deposit rate. And we've had the announcement of a stimulus package in equity markets in the eurozone aren't that higher um what's also going on in global financial markets uh the us and china their trading relationship is a bit better uh, it's not a it's, it's still far from fixed but it's a bit better and the latest we've heard late last night from president trump he stated that he's open to the idea of having an interim deal with china um there's obviously mr president trump is known to change his mind quite quickly but for the time being us and uh, U.S. and Chinese relations are on fairly good stead. Um, we're, we're, <clears throat> we saw the U.S. equity markets finish higher in the U.S. last night. They're being called higher this morning. Um, also, what's going on is Brexit. Um, there's a lot of um, volatility in the, in the British pound this morning. The sterling has, has rallied considerably against the U.S. dollar and the euro. Uh, so so, so the, the pound is doing very well. Uh, there's a belief that the, the possibility of a no-deal Brexit has, has diminished. There are some stories going around. Um, there doesn't appear to be a, a an agreed, fully agreed upon narrative. Um, one of the stories is John Burko, uh, MP and Speaker in the House of Commons, said he will ensure to use uh, creativity to ensure that Prime Minister Boris Johnson doesn't uh, uh, ignore a, a law that was recently brought in to prevent a no deal Brexit. There's also been conflicting in reports about the Democratic Unionist Party. There's a report in one of the newspapers saying that the DUP are about to soften some of their red lines. There's also, but I've also heard uh, DUP MP saying that, that rubbishing that report. So things are going are still a bit kind of back and forth in relation in relation to, to that side of the Brexit, nego Brexit negotiations and talks. But nonetheless, uh, the British pound uh, is is well uh, is, uh, is is pushing higher against the US dollar and the euro. Uh, taking a look, having a chat now about what's going on next week. <clears throat> uh, on Wednesday, we have CPI numbers out of the UK. These are going to be fairly important in the context of what, how the UK economy is holding up. Uh, we've re recently had fairly decent unemployment numbers and growth and earnings figures from the UK. So some aspects of the British economy, economy are doing quite well, despite the fact there's all these kind of, despite the fact construction uh, is a negative growth. Manufacturing isn't doing particularly well, and services is just about getting by. And not, not to mention a lot of headlines about doom and gloom, but some pockets of the British economy are still holding up. Inflation, from the last rating, is that was actually uh, higher than, than the Bank of England's target, tar price target. So the demand is still reasonably strong in, uh, in, in the in the UK. 
um, looking ahead on Wednesday, we also have an update from the Federal Reserve. Um, the Federal Reserve cut interest rates in in June. There's a lot of talk about rate, a rate cut or, or a large rate a rate cut or a large rate cut in September. President Trump has been screaming for uh, for for lower interest rates from the Federal Reserve. Keep in mind, we saw the European Central Bank um, keep their their base rate, the refinancing rate, unchanged, but the deposit rate has, has has been lowered, and they're going to have a QE scheme that could influence the could influence the Federal Reserve. But that being said, unemployment's very low, wages are solid in the US, uh, and the most re- most recent core inflation figures from the US suggest demand is strong. So there's an argument for the Fed to actually do nothing or just have a 25 basis point rate cut. Um, looking ahead to Thursday, a Bank of England interest rate decision. Given that Brexit is still up in the air, um, it's, it's, uh, it's highly unlikely the Bank of England will change their monetary policy. It seems to me that their monetary policy is very much um, bound uh, bound up until that Brexit has been has been decided upon uh, for wh- whatever kind of Brexit is delivered. Um, the Bank of England, should there, in the event of a no deal Brexit and in the event things are looking quite economically bad for the UK, the Bank of England would like to like to have the tools at its disposal to either cut interest rates or cut on the route of a stimulus package. Uh, so I suspect the Bank of England will just be sitting on the sidelines commenting on. Um, how commenting on the state of affairs in Brexit and how the uh, and, and the volatility in the British pound. <clears throat> uh, I'll quickly run through of some of the other other headlines or stories that are due out next week, and then talk about uh, and then talk about and then have a look at some of the major markets. So starting off on Monday, uh, Monday the sixteenth, we have numbers in China, um, fixed fixed asset investment, industrial production, and retail sales. This is going to give us a gauge of how of how how, how how fast a rate the Chinese economy is slowing down. Uh, keep in mind, the, the most recent industrial production figures fell to the lowest reading since the credit crisis. So that gives you an indication of how things are going in that regard. On Tuesday, we have the kind of OPEC Plus, as it's called, meet, uh, we, we have an announcement from OPEC Plus in relation to, uh, so traders will be listening out for any kind of commentary in relation to what kind of production, uh, if any kind of changes they're going to introduce. Um, on Tuesday, we have first quarter numbers from FedEx, the U.S. Uh, delivery parcel delivery company, the, the group is often seen as a barometer for um for for for, for demand in the U.S. They're the parcel delivery business. If people are buying, they're consuming a lot of goods. They're using they're, they're using um they will be um um using the, the services of um of FedEx. Um, looking ahead to Wednesday C- CPI, we have Eurozone CPI coming out. Final reading of, of August CPI reading from the Eurozone. We have first, we have first half results from Kingfisher. They're in the home improvements business. They've also got a new CEO uh, coming into the fold in, in the next number of months. Fed Reserve meeting on Wednesday, as I covered. We have first half figures from Next, uh, and and, uh, and and Next have, have actually had a pretty good start to the year in terms of the, the Q1 results. And the company apparently is is quite well prepared for a no deal Brexit. As mentioned, Bank of England meeting on Thursday, uh, and on well Friday we have Canadian retail sales, and we also have Canadian inflation figures coming out on Wednesday. So as promised, I'll take a look at some of the major markets. I'll first have a look at the um, the British pound versus the US dollar. So the wider trend is very much to the downside, but we saw a sharp move higher last uh, on, on um, last week. This candle here, this daily candle here, has a bit, you know, could look looks to me like a hammer formation. So the market is bouncing back, very bull, but followed by a very bullish candle here. The market has been pressing higher. We had a few days in a row where it closed above the 50-day moving average, this blue line here, and today it pressed on higher to a level not seen since late July. So if you can hold above the 50-day moving average, this blue line here on the on the, the pound versus US dollar. We could look to get a press up towards this zone here in around one spot 26. A move to the downside, uh, move back below the 50 moving average could take us back towards 122, and a slice of break below that uh, could take, take us back down sub 120. I take a look now. What's going on with the FTSE? So the FTSE, like global stock markets, has broadly moved higher in the last number of weeks. Uh, yesterday got to a level last seen um, in early August, so things are moving to the upside, but they're moving quite slowly, to be perfectly honest. Um, any kind of upward move, in, any solid move to the upside in the British pound tends to curtail or cap the FTSE's gain. But nonetheless, 
if you can hold above this region here in around 7300 306 if we can hold above that we could look to press on higher from here and should we take out the 7400 metric we could be looking at targeting this zone here around 7470 uh, if we do have a size of break below the 7300 region we could be looking heading back towards the 30 moving average this red line here and that comes into play around 7210 so the uh, the FTSE is in please is in is in okay shape it's comfortably above its foot it's dirty moving average but it's in not a good shape as the DAX or the S&P 500 which, which you can come to in a second so you can see here stellar move to the upside in the DAX we're at levels not last seen uh, in, in late July if we continue to press on higher from here uh, we could be looking at retesting this zone here 12,600 or or 12,660 uh, move to the downside. Should we see a bit of support come into? Should we drift lower? Support can be found from the uh, 12,300 region, or perhaps from this yellow line here, the 100 moving average, and that comes to play just north of 12,100. I'll take a look now. Finally, at the S&P 500, and the S&P 500, even though cash trading in the US hasn't uh, began yet, we're calling it around. 3,021.22. So we're talking about not too far away from a record high in the S&P 500. So it really gives an indication of how bullish sentiment is in the US. Um, if we continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking at heading heading up towards the 3,030, 40 marks one and support uh, heading into into a uh, create. We're looking likely that we're going to create continue to create further all further record highs. If you do drift back, uh, 3,000, 3,000, a big psychological number. That area might provide some support, and but if you do have a fairly sizable sell-off, support could be found from this blue line here, which is the 50-day moving average. You can see it acted as, as a resistance on a few occasions recently, so it might act as support in the near term, but there's no guarantee about that. Uh, and that comes to play uh, at 2,947. Um, just before I finish up, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC, please feel free to leave a review on Google Views. Thank you very much.